a massive water change on large fish farm. Stay tuned. Okay, so I've taken you to two specific locations in Jamaica that is what I would say is proficient in cultivating, re rearing, breeding, trading uh tilapia fish to locals, right? Local fish farmers, um individuals, clients to consume, restaurants, wherever. All right, today we're looking at the farm itself and we're looking at the whole idea of water change. Now, uh, tilapia cichlid from fry to adult size, plate size, it takes roughly between six and eight months, right? So, from it's actually hatched, how should I say? Yeah, it's it's released in the pan until it's on the table. Um, it, it's a time lapse of about six to eight months, right? And it all depends on several factors. Uh, one of the factors that is primarily not really calculated as a primary factor is the fact wherein it's water change is actually done now for your normal aquarium 40 gallon 50 gallon 2000 gallon right um you know you, you do water change periodically with a 10 percent 30 percent 40 percent right however for large fish ponds like these i mean like you know it's like some of them is like four and a half uh, feet in depth and one acre in length um you know it's 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 just crazy a lot of water all right now these ponds whenever they are filled with water um they are n the water is not removed um for water change purposes right uh as shared with Danny Bunting um doing his the excursion in which he took me on right uh fries are actually kept within a nursery between uh three to four weeks right and then after that they are released into uh, a, a a huge pond whether it be a, a half acre one acre whatever and it's talking about roughly between 10 to twenty thousand fries released into this water space so they are roughly between uh, i wouldn't say one and a half inch i would say um one inch little less than one inch and a little more than one inch between that right so they are pretty much small now and they are in a water space that covers half acre three acre three and a half acre a property right so let's look at the water you know parameters getting water in that space now two sources are used for um you know for what do you call it placing water or should i say sourcing water for uh large ponds one uh river and two well so the source of water for ponds at both at rather in spanish town and donny bunting in uh in, in, in ten catching also um longville farms uh we call just caught uh they do source their water through the river for um for for, for donny bunting and for rather water is sourced through the canal which is um coming from a river itself right uh what are some of the problems that this may have okay so you have several organisms that actually uh, lay their eggs in um in streams and rivers right these organisms can become parasitic to fish star if they actually are larger than fish star for example, um, dems fly or uh, dragonfly nymphs, right? You also have cases where in which uh, eggs for uh, jaguar cichlids have been sucked up through, through the filter system and end up into the waterway, or uh, should I say, in the pond water, right? Um, because you know that the, the, the pond water sits there for a couple of days before the fry is actually placed in it, right? so uh, by the time the fries are there probably the eggs are hatched and it's a very huge space for both rather and and on the mountain farm and you might end up with uh some jaguar cichlid fry swimming alongside um the tilapia uh cichlid fries and the jaguar cichlid fries might outgrow the tilapia cichlid fries 
causing problems in the sense that um you know predation the stock actually becoming depleted also the nymphs that are within the the pond space as a result of the water being taken from uh the nearby river uh also consumes the the fries which are you know usually between well it's less than uh a inch if anything is like a few uh, I would say uh, milliliters, uh, meters, uh, milliliters uh, over the inch. So it, it, it it's like the the, the, the the fries for the tilapia, tilapia fries might have a biting chance, but their mouth is not as huge so as to consume the nymph themselves, right? So this poses a problem as far as, um, you know, having those small fish in those large ponds um based on the fact that the water is coming from nearby um streams and rivers uh you know this can be a problem right uh but this is something that that's it's just difficult to manage being it that this is a a huge um plant a huge um system so you know you have to give and take you know making up your mind that you're going to actually lose some stuff but at the same time you want to maximize um the whole item can be employed so as to minimize the um this 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 situation from occurring um these mechanisms can include but not limited to the use of uh, a filtering system uh regarding to pumping the water from the river ensuring that nothing other than water actually comes from the river so it will be strained coming from the river however you know you do have um things that will still come in right so um you know this is just as i said before it's just something that you cannot actually run from so you just have to make up your mind so as to maximize as best as possible right okay so is another situation where you're using well water now if you're using well water jamaica uh 70 percent of jamaica is made up of limestone so if you're using well water chances that your water will be um alkaline are strong right now with the well water you're gonna need uh to use a buffering mechanism so as to ensure that the water pH is right for your tilapia pond uh, one of the good thing ab about uh you know fish ponds like these so large is that they are actually lined with clay and clay can be a means of buffering the water itself that means you're gonna have to have the water sit there for a while um you know in the pond before you actually add new fish to it right also some persons use other buffering agents um as uh, you know lava rocks uh you know they have other mechanism probably chemical mechanism that can actually buffer the water um keeping the page to the right level that the fish will would appreciate and be able to grow healthy and become good stock in the future so water change is really um you know important but um choosing your water source uh, on large fish farms like this is also um important right um i i like the fact that danny bunting in in sharing with regards to the, the end of stock what he does is that the the pond is actually drained of water and um you know it, it sits there for a while before water is added it gets as you would see it get really tough hard so anything in it will actually die and then no he will add water into it like probably a couple weeks after and start a fresh batch of stock right as far as the office at rather it seems as if these ponds are never yet um empty i do not know the mechanism they use so as to maintain the pond um quality um you know of of what is in it um i've seen tadpole tadpole um actually swimming so i figure more or less that um you know those i call it frogs that are my problem here uh, where i live um probably might be a problem um for the fries um within that pond space but you know as as it says you know when you're doing things for government you, you tend to not have that amount of care like when you're doing it for yourself so danny bunting in his wisdom he have actually employed strategies so as to combat the whole idea of um the negative implication of using um water 
source from the river and well so as to facilitate uh pond fish farming i hope that this video was of value i hope that it opens your thought process as to um you know where to go next in your planning for your uh tilapia fish farming peace out